My name is Kelly Palpum, Technical Manager for Envino Engineering, LLC. Today I would like to talk about pressurized condensate recovery systems, a solution to increasing the steam thermal cycle efficiency. And one of the things that I'll be talking about in these presentations is steam system thermal cycle efficiency. A benchmark that all plants must know is what is their steam system thermal cycle efficiency. This on, uh, will be a series of pressurized condensate recovery discussions. Pressurized condensate systems, what will be covered is why recover condensate? Simple. Standard condensate systems, which are utilized in most plants. And what is a pressurized condensate system? When we talk about pressurized condensate systems, what really are we talking about? Of course, the cost benefits and how to implement it. What type of process applications can adapt to a pressurized condensate system? And what components are needed to accomplish this opportunity? Steam and condensate energy. Steam is comprised of two types of energy, simple, latent, and sensible energy. The liquid, better known as the condensate, contains the sensible energy from condensing of the steam vapor, or latent energy has been released to the process. So latent energy is released, and we give the latent energy up to the process and condenses down into the condensate. We don't recover the sensible energy in the process because it's a low uh, amount of energy, and it would take too much heat transfer area to recover that. And so we anticipate the plant will recover the condensate back to the boiler plant with as <clears throat> much BTU as possible. Condensate contains as much as 16% of the energy. So in here, this condensate sitting in this tank here contains roughly about 16% of the energy. Therefore, we can't afford to waste this energy today. And what causes condensate losses? And we talk to plants all the time, you know, your benchmark should be 90% return, which we'll talk about. And the problems with not returning condensate, pumps, piping, production issues, all contribute to the loss of the condensate. As you can see, the condensate, the flash coming out, the pumps cavitating, all causing us not to return the condensate back to the boiler operation. Condensate system optimization, one of the top five optimization items for the steam system is recover the condensate. You know, today the benchmark's about 90% or higher. Now, if there's direct in injection applications out there in the process, of course we're not going to get 90% return. Now, we have plants that are getting 96% return and they want to do better. So your benchmark is 90% or higher if you do not do direct injection. The other thing is elimination of atmospheric system, if possible, and going into the pressurized return system. A general note of condensate recovery. Condensate, therefore, needs to return to the boiler plant operation and improve, in order to improve the steam system uh, thermal cycle efficiency, reduce the following, not the energy efficiency, but reduce energy, chemical costs, make up water costs, sewer system disposal costs, and meet environmental re regulation. Today, uh, you know, the thing is, is that what we did in condensate systems five years ago is not what we do today. You know, the, the market's changed, technology has changed, and we have to change also. So the change is to go to the pressurized return system if possible. So today, industrial plants are changing to the pressurized condensate system to improve the steam system thermal cycle efficiency, reduce the utility costs, and increase the profitability of the company. Plants cannot afford to just return condensate by atmospheric pump system. So just returning by standard atmospheric pump system 
isn't increasing our steam th system thermocycle efficiency, it's still doing what we did 20 years ago. Pressurized condensate system improves the steam system thermocycle efficiency by reducing the wasted energy. And I'll talk about the different components and what a uh, standard system, the inefficiencies of a standard condensate system, and what the pressurized system does to recover that energy. The pressurized condensate system, uh, the system can provide 5 to 35% savings in fuel costs. And that's pretty substantial. Uh, you know, 35% can it be obtained? Yes, if the system can adapt to it, we have accomplished that. Compared to the conventional atmospheric vented condensate systems, and we'll go through the calculations in the next series, the savings can be substantial. So we're really looking today at pressurized condensate systems, if possible, and the other thing, the, the nice thing about pressurized contact systems, so typically low cost for implementation, uh, and most of the time less than a one year payback, which is a very attractive to the plant operation. And the condensate system classifications, there's four classifications of a condensate system. Standard condensate systems, which are gravity or atmospheric. Condensate line, pressure maintained at or close to zero PSI, and low pressure one to 15 PSI. A pressurized condensate system is the medium pressure, 16 to 99 PSI, and the high pressure is 100 PSI or higher. You know, people say uh, they have a high pressure condensate return system and they're operating at 65 PSI, that's not a high pressure, that's a medium pressure. A medium pressure 16 to 99 PSI G. Understanding a pressurized condensate system, the typical condensate system operates at back pressure due to the following. Condensate line uh, undersize, uh, neglect the steam traps blowing into the uh, <clears throat> blowing steam into the condensate line, of course it's going to cause pressure. So most condensate systems are running under some uncontrolled pressure. These items alone can be cause pressure in the condensate system. A pressurized condensate system difference. Uh, the difference is that it, the condensate return pressure is systematically controlled to a predetermined set point that is matched to the process peak performance level. So we maintain a pressure in the condensate system uh, to a predetermined, we control the pressure in the condensate system and control it in a, different, a number of different ways. Condensate pressure in the system is controlled by dynamics of the system design. Essentially, you know, if we do a cascade flash system, we're controlling the pressure in that condensate system by the dynamics of the system. Uh, controlled by a, a control system, flash tank control system. Uh, this happens to be uh, shown here in this picture, a tank system that has controlled pressure into the flash steam system, which gives us a controlled pressure in the condensate return system because the return system is going back to a pressurized vessel that we do control. The other thing is, is that process systems, the process uh, condensate systems will have different designs depending on the application. So down here, these are some high pressure uh, process heating coils. Of course, uh, we're maintaining our pressures above X set point on the steam so we can return under pressure in the uh, condensate system. Down here, these are some reboilers. Again, we can go into a pressurized system with a thermal compressor added into it. However, these are modulating loads and they have to come down here to an atmospheric system. So the next series we'll talk a little bit more about the dynamics of the systems and what has to be looked at to make the system uh, work together with a pressurized system. Just don't go out and implement the pressurized system without looking at the dynamics of it. So in the next series, you'll see what we talk about in the systems and how to implement.